morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're watching this, and welcome back to Tech It. So following on from the previous episode, uh, I had my laser drill and the precharger running away nicely, and it filled me up with some wonderful resources. Uh, the only thing I didn't actually get, which I was quite surprised by, is any yellow right ore, um, which I'm assuming will come, but at the moment it's a bit lacking. Now, when it comes to the fact that I've now drained all the power, what I've started to do is prepare the new turbine casing. So I've just absolutely rinsed through all of this. It's starting to fill up again now because I've turned the laser drill off. But I need to extend the turbine. And hopefully, by extending the turbine, I will be able to generate enough power to, uh, to then power my normal base as well as power all of my demands and desires in addition to the laser drill. So I'll turn the reactor off. Obviously you can see I've redesigned the reactor a little bit. I've gone back to a uh, basically a circle setup. There is enderium in the middle uh, to try and transfer the heat more effectively uh, apparently. And then there's gelide chromium all around the outside uh, because apparently you should try and cool your reactor even though it is a actively cooled reactor. So this will make the fuel efficiency a bit more efficient, I guess is the word I want to use. But I've got my enderium blocks. Now I've made 28, that's much the maximum I can do so far. I should be making some more. I have told it to try and make some more. Yeah, it is. It's currently going and doing what it needs to do. Uh, have I got any blaze powder? Nope. So we'll get the blaze rods on the go. Uh, it's very easy to put those into there. I'm guessing I need to grab some blaze powder out of there, don't I? And put a blank template on because it's worth having them. What's going on here? Automatically doable. So that should put blaze rods and blaze powders and sort all that out. I haven't refueled the rods yet in the reactor. But I've got my enderium. I also need some turbine parts, don't I? So I've hopefully put it all into automated. Uh, I don't know how many of these I'm going to need. I keep forgetting how big my uh, my new reactor is. Let's just bank 64 of them off. It should be relatively simple to do. Okay. Have we run out of cryothrium? This could be a problem. Okay. So let's let's put some yellorium into here so that we can turn it on, even though it's not gonna work. Just to burn burn through. Just burn through. Uh, we also need to pull this apart. So we need to start by taking all this down. Obviously, this is going to be changed. We can get all of this wonderful turbine housing out of the way. And we need to remove the gold. And then we need to fill in the gap. And then we can put everything back where it needs to be. So I'm going to need to add a fair amount of turbines in order to try and maximize the efficiency of the whole thing. So we've got turbine glass and we've got everything that we could need. So let's now fill in the gap. This is a massive turbine or will be a massive turbine. We are enjoying a thunderstorm as well in game. It's always nice. So we've got, I'm supposed to have, I guess, turbine glass here apparently keeping with the original spec. Oh, I missed one there, that's fine. I will fill that in. And then we can put some glass in here. And to give us all a good view. Brilliant, okay. We can put that one up there and we can put these in. So I can still get out, can't I? Excellent. So might as well finish the window off. So that should sort that all out. Okay. So the rotor needs to come along 
all the way to the end. Like so. Brilliant. And now it comes to the Enderium. Now I'd like to get at least three, maybe four loops of Enderium. Because I want to maximize the power. So three is definitely going to work. Can I get four? Uh... Apparently I can. Okay, so we'll go for four for now. I need to look at all the actual stats because there are some, some crazy stats about what you can and can't do with... Bloody hell. Get in there. Crazy, crazy stats that need deciphering to really understand. I don't have a degree in maths to help fully understand what I can and can't do. I also need to add another power plug into here because you can only draw 10,000 RF per plug. So, because we're hoping to be able to pull over 20,000 a tick out of here, I now need to have that in place instead. So we can recover these. Where's my... Oh, glitch everything out. I grabbed the wrong one, apparently. Throw those out of the way. Okay. So we've now got to put the turbine uh, blades into place. Like so. Okay. I'm going to leave a gap between them each for now. I don't think this has any benefit other than doing what I want it to do. Because it's going to block me in, isn't it? Brilliant. can add more turbine blades Oops, if I need to. So it's going to be a bit of trial and erroring to come obviously to terms with all of this. Make sure everything is okay. Now, I, oh crap, <laughs> all the buttons are pressing are wrong. I don't believe I have any control over these inputs and outputs. But you do No. Okay. So I could move all the turbines along one. I really wanted to make it look a bit more pretty. So let's put down the rest of these. We get our completed turbine. So let's activate the turbine see how much power that'll steam this is generating so it's happily oh extremely hot hang about have i got these on these are all set to 90 here so the, the core is going to get this it's going to get it turning which is always good so we are going to start generating power now obviously we're generating what 1800 rf already with the enderium as it is as well as our bank of turbines so we'll see what we can do as far as 99.4 percent it's good it's a good it's a good usage oh i've seen a blade missing there how oh, did i forget to put one in behind me Well, we'll come into the back because I don't want I don't want to be that guy that has a broken turbine. So we'll get this to spin up, and once it's spinning up, I will. Uh, oh, it's already on. We'll get it to spin up. Once it's spinning up at about 1800 um, RPM. I will bring the episode, I'll bring the video back in again so we can see and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so I'll be back in a flash.
Okay, we've let it run and we let it spin, and as you can see, it's it's when I grab this, it's now it's now steady at about 1500 RPM uh, with its max flow. So there's no, I can't give it any more steam to push it any higher, uh, which means I've done something wrong. And I've worked out by looking at this sort of stat here that I've obviously given it 40 rotor blades, uh, but it could support 80. So what I mean is I'm providing enough steam to support 80 rotor blades, but I've only got 40 in here. So I can easily put another bank of four, uh, four, another bank on each of these, another five sets of rotor blades. And that would give me, uh, I'm assuming double what this current RF output is. Because it's hitting 12,000 RF at the moment per tick. Um, so I really want to hit 20, which is, is the key magic number. The problem I've got is that the recipe for a rotor blade involves cyanide. Now, obviously cyanide is created by the reactor, which is so efficient that it's burning 0.04 megabuckets, millibuckets per tick, um, because I've set it up so well. So that's frustrating. I'm gonna be slowly and surely just crying with pain about how slow it's burning uh, through the, the resources. So if we just run to the moon base, the only thing I can hope is, I can't remember if I plug this back in again or not. I didn't. It has one. <laughs> oh, come on. One. One. One, 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 one. Um, that's a ball ache, isn't it? Really, let's be honest. Um, so I'm, I'm close. I'm close, but there's no cigar because I need another 40 rotor blades and my one cyanide bar is going to be enough to give me one. Is it one per? It is one per. So I need another 25 cyanide bars. It's not the end of the world. It just means there's going to be quite a long pause between this episode, this part of the episode and the next part of the episode. So I'm going to need to let both of my reactors burn through and basically give me power. So I will bring you back again, guys, when I have got my remaining cyanide and I've therefore got my remaining turbines. And I have put the turbines in and it's spinning up. Once it's spinning up, hopefully at about 1600, 1700 RPM, I will bring you in for the glorious arrival at the wonderful peak and let's see what RF we're getting. All right, see you in a mo. Bye for now. So you join me back here again with my turbine, and I'm just trying a tiny little tweak it, just a little one milli, dinny, winny, milli, milli, but milli bucket per tick to try and stop it rising, because it's it's gone all up to 18, it's still going up now. I'd like it to hover around 1800, because it's doing 20,000 RF per tick as I want it to, at 100%. Um, I don't know why it says 80 of 69. Um, I'm assuming it's it's because I've reduced this down, so I don't need 80 blades at 1700. I only need 69, but it, it's yeah, it's spinning faster. I don't want to spin it too much faster because I don't want to uh, I don't want to break it. So I might just see how fast it does go eventually. But for now, I think we've managed to settle it down. Yeah, about 1800. And it's picking it up, isn't it? It's picking it up nicely. So 20,000 RF per tick. We should be seeing some power. Why have they all got 4,175 in them? That seems oddly specific. Oh, that one's full. Why is that one full? Hmm. So we've got some power coming in, apparently not. But at the same time, we've got power going out because I have turned the precharger back on again. And so this is draining its its maximum. Oh, God damn it! Why is this door so inc inc inconsiderate? These have all got max energy. There's no no concern about this. I mean, this is working continuously uh, to produce ores for me. Now, obviously, I need to. Uh, 
to find a way of getting these ores into the actual ME network and getting them all processed. But that'd be very easy because I'll either just put a ender chest in there or I'll put a uh, export bus, import bus, whichever bus is necessary. And that'll do us just fine. So we have our huge reactor now. So this bad boy is now producing probably a bit too much uh, power. So let's just dink two of these control rods up to 90 and see if that drops the power. So it drops the, uh, drops the temperature down, brings our percentage. So we can get this percentage uh, for the reactivity um, up to about 400%. That's, that's, that's what you want, apparently. Anything between 400 and 500, so it shows you've got it set up uh, effectively and efficiently to uh, to make the most use of the fuel that it gets. So as long as we still get our 1700 buckets, it's fine. The temperature obviously can come down a bit further, maybe. So we'll tweak the other two as well. So that one up to 90. Let's put that one up to 90 and just see how much of an effect that has. So we're still getting 1700 buckets. Do we hit the stable 400% now? It's close. I think if I turn another one off, it will come down too far. If I turn this one off as well, no, that's already off. If I turn this one off as well, I don't th think that will give me the. Oh no, it might, it might do it. It might do it. It might do 700 millibuckets of ticks. At less than four. Well, I suppose as far as temperature is concerned, the uh, water boils at 100 degrees. So why would it need 300 degrees temperature? It can still boil water. It's not going to break. There you go. It's breaking the 400%. It's hovering around 400% now, which is all good. But we're losing the steam. There we go. That's what I thought would happen. So it's not not quite right. So let's put two of these down to 80. And we'll accept the slight over overclocking as far as our... See, I'm pretty sure if I leave that at full power, it's going to go way above the, uh, the top end of that one, isn't it? So we're getting 20,000 RF per tick from this reactor. So this reactor is now powerful enough as far as the this turbine is concerned to generate the steam that we need not quite sure what I would need to do um, to make it more efficient because I've maxed out the number of turbine blades so I think this is the most effective turbine combination uh, maybe I could obviously add some more enderium one, one more one more enderium before I have to go through the wall but this reactor is clearly too big. I don't need a reactor anywhere near this big to generate enough steam. Uh, I think this reactor is probably big enough to pull or put enough steam into probably multiple turbines. So I have to have a look maybe at building a turbine room at some point in the future. So maybe going a floor down uh, and having a room filled with turbines. So this is clearly an effective turbine design as far as size each one of these I produce would get well would very easily happily and comfortably get 20,000 RF per tick so once I have enough resources a second time round to build a second one of these uh, I can have a look at getting some more turbines but it's all about the uh, the cyanide or whatever it is that's a problem because I've only got four of it now um, so it's about building the rebuilding the stocks I still get more of it. Obviously, I will not not convert it into plutonium, which is what I have done. How much plutonium have I got? I've got 47 plutonium, which is uh, now turning out to be a waste because each of those plutonium is worth two cyanide, which uh, right now would be extremely. Where's my squid gone? I've lost Ugh. lost my squid. How many inks did I get before my squid died? 7,000. All right, okay, fair enough. I don't need my squid anymore. Clearly, uh, claim, the game said, you've, you've got more ink than you need now. We'll, uh, we'll end you there. So, I think that's a good point to say, well, look at that. 
we have an extremely expensive turbine with the Enderium blocks at the end, ripping through huge amounts of steam but producing 20,000 RF per tick, which is probably not quite enough. So I think the solar farm uh, might be a good idea to help you know top up the batteries during the day. And if I can get my own machine and my ME network to automate the building of most of the, uh, the parts of that, then it shouldn't be too expensive or too time consuming to build. Uh, but we'll see. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.